All right, the lesson we are talking about today is the proportions unit lesson 12, indirect measurement. If you are in advance, this lesson goes along with lesson 12, 11, and the homework for that has is page 30 to 33 to be even. If you are in regular free algebra, this is a single lesson, and the homework that goes with that is page 32 and 33. All right, I want you to pause your video right now. Do this problem. All right, it says a car can travel 585 miles on 18 gallons of gas. Write an equation relating the distance D to the number of gallons of gas G. How many gallons of gas does a car need to travel 1,300 miles? Well, let's look at what we have here. We've got miles in gallons. Does it make sense to find? Miles per gallon or gallons per mile? Miles per gallon is what we're going to go with. So, let's remember that our equation to find a unit rate is K equals Y over X. And our equation to write a line, a proportional relationship, is Y equals K. Now, we're going to do miles which they're telling us they want us to use D to gallons, which they want us to use G. So, it says we're going 585 miles in 18 gallons. So, if you divide that, 585 divided by 18 is 32.5 miles per gallon. So that is our unit rate or rate of change or constant of proportionality, whatever you want to call it. Now, once we've done that, they want us to write an equation. Now, what variable are we using for y? Look up here. I organized it. Y is d. So d equals K we found to be 32.5, and X is G. So, your distance equals 32.5 times the number of gallons. That is your equation. Once you have your equation, and we can answer any question. How many gallons of gas does this car need to travel 1,300 miles? So, let's use our equation. D equals 32.5 G. 1,300 is distance, so it goes in D. How do I solve this for D? Divide both sides by 32.5. And our guess, D is 1,300 divided by 32.5 is 30. Again, I want you to pause your video and do this problem. All right, if I'm going to do this, these two triangles will be proportional, and really this should be here. Let's do the big triangle and then the little triangle. Let's label the sides. So, in the big triangle, this tall side right here is X. What is this bottom side? This is 20. Because from here to here is 14. From here to here is 6. 14 plus 6 is 20. What is the length of the hypotenuse? It'll be 29. And the little one? This is 6. This is 10. Now, we want to find This has to be 8. Make that 8. That side has to be 8. Now we can solve. I'm going to put our notation. I'm going to circle corresponding parts. I'm going to put a square or a rectangle around those two corresponding parts. And I'm going to put a triangle around those two corresponding parts. Let's write our proportion. So I'm going to do x over 20 equals 8 over 6. x over 20 equals 8 over 6. Cross multiply. I write 6x equals 80. Divide both sides by 6. x is 13 and 1 third. Alright, 
now. Open up in your note packet to page six. Let me explain what indirect measure is. Indirect measurement is measuring an object without physically measuring. So, for example, measuring an object. example of this is if something is so big that you cannot go measure it, like maybe a tree, a real tall tree. You can't go to the top of the tree and drop down a measuring tape and figure out how tall it is. But what you can do is use the angle of the sun as it casts its shadow and measure something that's smaller, see how long its shadow is, and then use the shadow of the tree, which you would be able to measure because it's on the ground to find how tall the tree is. So, let's look at some examples. A school that is 40 feet high casts a shadow 160 feet long. A nearby cell phone tower casts a shadow 210 feet long. Find the height of the shower. So, here's our school. Here's the tower. Here's the sign. So, here's the school. The school is 40 feet high. And think about it. If the sun is shining down, won't it cast a shadow on the ground? It'll look like this. As that sun shines down, here's the shadow on the ground. How long is the shadow? 160. So, here's our tower. As the sun is still shining down, the same exact angle. The shadow of this tower is 210. We want to know how tall the tower is. I highly recommend drawing a diagram. Now, we can set up our proportion. Look, 40 over 160. The building over the shack equals x over 210. So, building over the shack. That's our cheating counter. When I cross multiply, I love 160x equals 8,000 divide both sides by 160, and I end up with x would be 52.5 feet high. A fire tower casts a shadow 30 feet long. A nearby tree casts a shadow 8 feet long. How tall is the fire tower if the tree is 20 feet? So, we've got a tree and a fire tower. Here's our tree and its shadow. Here's our fire tower and its shadow. Let's see. A fire tower casts a shadow 30 long. So remember, the shadow's on the ground. A nearby tree casts a shadow 8 feet long. How tall is the fire tower if the tree is 20 feet long? So, again, let's set up our proportion height over shadow. Money over eight for the tree. Height over shadow equals x over eight. Height over shadow. Cross multiply. Eight x equals six hundred. Divide both sides by eight. X is seventy-five feet. So the tower is seventy-five feet tall. A building casts a shadow. 100 meters long. At the same time, a nearby pole casts a shadow 7 meters long. What is the height of the building? So, we've got a building and a pole. Here's our sign. Here's your building. Here's your pole. So, our building casts a shadow 100 meters long. So, the shadow is always on the ground. At the same time, a nearby pole that is 30 meters high casts a shadow 7 meters high. What is the height of the building? So, let's set up a proportion. Height over shadow. So, we'll have x over 100 equals 3 over 7. Cross multiply. So, 